What is up YouTube tool tubers of the world? My name is Brad. Welcome to the workbench. And today we're going to take a first look at the wind oscillating spindle standard. Now this is a portable version, but it has a lot of cool features. If you're limited on space, if you're tight on money, this might be the tool for you. Heart. I'd like to take this chance to apologize to absolutely nobody. All right, so right off the bat, I want you guys to understand this is not a full-fledged review. This is a tool I just got. I just used it for the first time to go through about, I don't know, I think I got about 18 of these coasters. But just in that one time using it, I think it's a good enough value to at least bring to your attention. Now, I can't say, hey, this thing's going to last, you know, forever. It's, it's, it's high quality. I mean, it's a win tool. Win are cheap tools. You, you got to understand that. But... I wanted to show enough people this because I know there's mosquitoes all in my shop. <laughs> I know there's enough people in similar situations as me. Y'all could tell from the intro I'm in a very cramped space. And I know there's a lot of other people in tiny shops just like this. The other big benefit of this thing is it's portable. So you can use it like this and go along the edge of a board or a tabletop or whatever have you. Or, what I think is super cool about it, the biggest reason I bought it, is you can flip it around on a flat bench top, and you have two of these little clamps that now can make it a miniature oscillating spindle sander. And a really awesome part about this tool is it's like 50 bucks. You can't beat that for 50 bucks. So what comes with it is you get two of these little clampy dealies, you get this little, they call it a fence or an edge guide, and then of course, different size spindles. Uh, this is like a three quarter, I'd probably call this maybe inch and a half, uh, three quarter, right? Yep, three quarter and probably a half inch here. Yep. So it came with a half inch sleeve, but I didn't have a half inch rubber drum, so I was wondering what was up with that. So you're just supposed to put the half inch sleeve directly on there, I guess. Okay. That's cool. And so we're going to put the three quarter back on here. Get it on there good and tight. That's good. And then also this little mounting bracket or mounting pad, I guess so the vibration. I didn't use it and I didn't have a problem, but I guess it wouldn't hurt anything. You don't want to put too much pressure using these clamps and break your plastic housing. So this would give it a little cushion. Speaking of which, it is all plastic rubber over molding rubber uh, reference surface we could say that the travel is not as much as a true bench top spindle sander and i'll show you right now so just looking at it i'd probably say half inch of uh, actual travel there i was looking through the manual to see if it actually listed how much travel i noticed there's another sheet so i guess that half inch thing must be an issue because they put a whole new pamphlet that says when using the half inch sanding sleeve, just put it straight on the shaft. <laughs> so, those kind of things always make me laugh. But I think it's 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 a, it's a pretty nifty little deal. There's a couple other brands making this or rebranding it, whatever have you. Wind just happened to be the cheapest at the time. I have other wind tools that I've been pretty happy with for the home shop. I don't think some of these wind tools would take professional abuse or use or at least not something you're going to use constantly like i wouldn't go out and buy a wind router or a wind table saw but things like a drill press and a wood shop especially a home wood shop that i'm going to use you know once a month or so it's perfect for that kind of stuff and this will probably see more use than anything because i'm constantly doing small coasters charcuterie boards Things I cut out on the uh, CNC that have bad edges or edges that need cleaned up, this is going to be perfect for. And in fact, it was perfect for because I just used it to clean up all those coasters. And I'll show you that clip now.
as you can see, I made quick work of those coasters, got the edges nice and cleaned up, at least cleaned up enough that, you know, we're ready for lacquer. And, of course, you can buy different size, different grits with this if you want to, you know, sand it up to 600 or 300 or whatever you have, you you know, once you get to about 180 to 200, plenty good enough for lacquer. And then, of course, I forgot to mention, but it is variable speed, so we'll go from low to high just so you can actually see it. That's low speed. So the variable speed is a nice little feature. I don't know how often I'll really use it, but you never know. The downsides that I can see to this thing just right off the bat, of course, remember that, is that it's loud as hell. <laughs> if you haven't been able to tell, I've probably turned down the volume when it's running. And uh, it blows a whole lot of air. So I'm guessing this motor must get hot because there's a lot of air blowing out at you here so that and when you're sanding something of course that can create dust in your eyes it does have a dust collection here which sucks through these little channels and up into here to get it directed and it, it works okay if i'm if i'm gonna be doing you know a dozen of something i'd probably hook up the dust collection one or two i probably wouldn't worry about it and then the weight if i was using this handheld even though it's sitting down there it's a little heavy but that's not always a bad thing, you know. Heavy can take out some vibration and also add some stability sometimes. And just so y'all can see it mounted up, even though I, I know I already showed a video, we'll mount it on the pad this time. It's, it's pretty simple. That's plenty stable enough for the small things you're gonna be doing with this. If you wanted to, you could take these screws out and mount it into a table and just have that sticking up. The other thing I really like is the portability. I'm gonna be able to take this to work when we have some small pain in the ass projects we need to sand. So the best thing I can do right now is keep using it and come back, you know, six months, eight months, or whatever it's gonna be after I feel like I've really given this thing a workout and tell you how it's held up. Of course, if it dies early or dies before then, I'm gonna let you know. I'll look up the warranty, but the majority of wind tools seem to have uh, about a two year warranty on average. Always look up each tool individually though, because it does vary. I've seen other tools only have one year. I'll leave a link to this in the description. If you feel so inclined to use it, it will help out the channel. I'm an Amazon affiliate like most YouTubers. It gives me a few pennies, helps support the channel. So I'm not gonna drag on this video any longer than it has to be. It's a cool tool. It's, it's a, definitely an option. If you're on a budget or in a small space, you know, you wrap up the cord, you put it in a toolbox or on a shelf, and it's not taking up room on your bench top. That's probably the number one benefit of this thing that I'm seeing. And so if you enjoyed this little quick overview of the Wen Portable Oscillating Spindle Sander, if you're building a wood shop on a budget or just like a DIY hobby type shop, I'm always looking for budget friendly tools, you know, for the guy that's just getting started or trying to build up a shop. Maybe this will just get you by until you can afford that nice bench top spindle sander. Until next time, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, we'll holler at you next time. Peace! Yeah.